Welcome to the highlights of the Benson Hedges World Series Cup. This is the deciding game, a very important one for both India and New Zealand. The match being played in Launceston. The points table in the Benson Hedges World Series Cup shows that Australia have 13. They're already in the finals. And uh, India have eight, New Zealand seven. The team cards, the changes are that Kulkarni, the medium pace bowler, has come into the side for Shiva Ramakrishnan. And Vensaka, unfortunately, is unfit for India. He damaged a knee in the match against Australia the other evening. Jimmy Arbanath comes back in after he in turn had missed a match through injury. New Zealand, well a couple of surprising changes there. Bracewell goes out, presumably because it's a small ground, his spin won't be needed, but John Wright is out. Now John Wright has done very well the last couple of games. John Reid comes in in his place and Snedden, understandably, comes in in place of John Bracewell. Conditions good, the pitch very firm, but Tony Gregg said uh, in his report on it that he thought there might be some variable bounce and uh, certainly there's not a great deal of grass on the surface. The toss won by Jeremy Coney, he put India into bat, here's the first over, the great Richard Hadley is the bowler, he's coming into Srikanth and your commentators are Ian Chappell and Tony Gregg. Just short of Coney, Srikanth guided that one I think uh, attempting to get it past Coney and almost put it into his hands. Yes, there's going to be some movement out there. This one uh, just moving fractionally away. Did try to open the face and run it down to third man. Didn't carry. So Hadley again, who's going to be a real danger on this wicket. Edged and taken by McSweeney. What a good uh, blow that is for Richard Hadley and New Zealand. Yes, that is a beautiful delivery. Pitched perfectly on that line just outside off stump. And then it moves away quite dramatically. Finds the outside edge. And uh, Max Winnie doesn't make mistakes with catches like that one. So a great start this for New Zealand. Gavaskar, who's a pretty prolific scorer in this competition, out for one. India one for one. Chatfield comes in to Shrikant. And there's that uh, lovely off drive that Shrikant likes to start his innings with. Hasn't quite got it uh, in the middle. It's a good save. Bruce Blair, the man who chased that ball all the way to the boundary. And a touch of desperation about the New Zealand effort. Yes, this is magnificent fielding. This one hit straight down the ground. Once again, high on the bat, but uh, heaved over the top of Midoff. And uh, a little bit of bad bounce there for Shrikant. Slows that ball up. And uh, have a look at Blair here. It goes flying into this fence. It's tremendous. Pulls it back. Nearly knocks the fence over but saves the run. It's a nice shot. Playing that one straight and along the ground. Once again, Blair giving chase, but uh, the ground's pretty quick. And Jovi's done his work well so far, Bruce Blair. He's saved, I would say, at least uh, four or five runs for New Zealand already. Yes, and uh, this was good fielding too. The difference this time was that he used one of the young Tasmanians as a, a way of stopping down on the boundary, as opposed to the fence. He's a big man, and uh, he has to go down once again in order to drag it back. And uh, that little fellow there managed to get his feet up in time. Virtual the breeze blowing straight down the ground. Top edge. Oh, it flies over the slip cordon. Bit of bounce for you and Chatfield. Yes, well, if that had been Richard Hadley, you could understand why that uh, bounce occurred. Why it eluded the man at second slip. But you and Chatfield, he's only a medium pacer, and yet he was able to extract that bounce out of this pitch. Hadley to Armanov. Ah. Chatfield won't get this. Six off the over. The boundary they so badly needed. It's one for 19. Said that, so Kanth breaks loose, and that's what they need to do. The 12th over, locked over the infield, hitting with the breeze, intelligent batting. And just the second boundary in this 12th over, and Tree Kanth there doing the right thing, hitting with the breeze. All he had to do was get that ball up in the air. It was well timed, and away it went. Stuart Gillespie and Armanath take strike. Beautifully played, glorious square cut by Armanath. Just a fraction short, Gillespie. And now, uh, quickly onto the back foot. 
fact, one of the amazing things about that shot was that Richard Hadley, who was down at third man, he didn't even move. He knows that it's a short boundary out there. It was so well struck by Amanath. He had no hope of cutting that off. Two boundaries of 47 deliveries faced. Well played. Nine runs off the over. One for 48. Sledden starts with a no ball, and that's not going to be very popular with uh, Jeremy Coney, particularly as it's been smashed away back through the mid-wicket area. A few no balls and wides from the New Zealanders today. They're having a bit of trouble with this very strong breeze out there. And there's a fine shot. Guys recant the way just in front of square leg through that mid-wicket area. Very stiff breeze, and Sledden has to come up into it. Hadley bowled quite magnificently with the breeze at his back early on. He said it's a 50 partnership for this pair. It was pretty heavy going for them early, particularly against Hadley. But now they're starting to reap the benefits of that hard work. Ah! It's LBW. It's the Panthers gone, trying to hit away on the onside. At uh, first sighting, it looked to be absolutely plum. Certainly the umpire thought so umpire Tony Crafter absolutely plump so what a pity for the Indians really had done the hard work he'd taken a lot of body blows Martin Sneddon coming on Srikanth uh, out for 22 now here LBW to yeah, Sneddon India yeah. two for 52 gone Gillespie has got him not on one of the best balls of the morning the idea from Amanath was just to turn it down to fine leg and pick up four wide of Chatfield he just got a little bit too fine it may even afflict the pad as well difficult catch for McSqueeny uh, he would have been uh, almost unsighted then as the ball passed between the uh, the bat and the pad made a long way across on his left Amanath on his way now he made a difficult 24, played a couple of shots, he started very slowly, and India now three wickets down for 56. New batsman is Mohammad Azruddin, he comes in at the fall of um, Mahindra Amanath's wicket. He has a strike rate of 59.23, here's Gillespie. Two to Mohammed Azruddin, off the mark straight away, three for 58. Martin Sneddon is the bowler, Al Hotra taking strike. It's a great stroke, and that's Sneddon's weakness. When he errs, it is uh, almost invariably an over-pitched delivery round about middle and leg or leg stump. Yes, it's difficult bowling into the breeze. Uh... He's falling away towards cover and the ball can't go anywhere but down the leg side. Uh, he consistently does that. Gillespie four overs for 21, Martin Stead and two for 10 and now Martin Crow comes on. Bracewell's been left out of the side and so too Box, so it's an all pace attack. Here's Crow. Ah! And beautifully bowled for a start. That left the right hand of Mohammad Azruddin. Crow's normally an in-swinger. He comes on, takes a wicket with his first ball, and that is a very, very important wicket as far as New Zealand are concerned. Yes, that was tragic. And again, oh. Sweeney, what a job he's done behind the stumps. His third catch, and Martin Crowe, that'll certainly get the confidence up. Uh, India's fourth wicket down now for 64, and Azradin back in the pavilion. Very blustery conditions. Martin Crowe, the bowler. Well, that's well played. Up on his toes, smashes that one away square. Hadley won't get to it. That's a lovely shot from Malhotra. Martin Crowe's tactics have been to drop the ball in short because there's some bounce, and that could prove his undoing because he must bowl on length at Malhotra. Beautifully positioned there. The weight transferred onto the back foot, and he found the gap. Glorious square cut. Stanton bowls, and it's Ravi Shastri at the batting end. 
There we are. That's through the field, and uh, no way in the world they're going to cut that one off. Straight down to the boundary it goes. Lovely shot. And so Ravi Shastri is now off the mark. It's taken him 15 balls to get off the mark, but he did it in style. Smashed it through the gap there down towards mid wicket. We smashed that one it's all the way. Quite difficult to take some of that. Mid -wicket. And that really was a lusty blow. Yeah. With that shot from Ravi Shastri, I think that's the way the Indians have got to go now. They've got to start playing a few shots and make sure on this small ground that they do punish anything that's a bit loose. And just clears John Wright, the acting captain, fielding at mid-wicket. Well, with the score not quite 100 at the 30th over mark, the Indians realise the urgency here. That is a sudden death playoff. There's no prizes for second in this one. And also uh, getting the opportunity to take some catches. But that one fell between three of them. Snedden, Blair and Wright himself. Well, uh, you need a little luck sometimes in sport, particularly with the bat. But can you believe that? The ball is just about. <laughs> then almost the run out. I think the run out could have been on too there. Beautifully hit there by Ravi Shastri. So two boundaries in that over. That will help India's cause as the hundred comes up. himself a bit of room there and it worked because Martin Snedden banged it in short and he was able to uh, play the hook shot and pick the gap between Crow and Gillespie in fact Crow uh, right on the boundary line had very little time to to even uh, to move to his right didn't quite time it very well as a one-handed shot didn't look that elegant backed away to Wood square leg very short boundary here, square of the wicket. That one could be over. Yes, it clears Martin Snedden. It's only about a 50, well, 60 yard, 60 yard uh, boundary at the most. And it cleared it by about five yards. Filler Ashok, Mel Hotra, and the flat bat swat. And he gets that one up in the air, and the strong breeze carries it well over the fence. Footwork well outside the line of the leg stump. And into the crowd. Work back, cross, balance. Not quite, well, he's not quite composed. Shastri was waiting for the ball to bounce a little, and he was much too late on the shot. Yes, yeah, a bit of low bounce, plus I think other things were on Shastri's mind. He may have predetermined the shot. That one hits the base of the off stump. Snedden gets the wicket. Shastri made 23 after a very slow start. And India now five down for 119. Ashok Malotra now. Right Lovely start for Ashok Malotra. There was nothing wrong with that ball. It was good length, just moving away a little bit. Glorious stroke. Well, Richard Hadley's first five overs and exceeded seven runs. That was a magnificent effort. He's really greeted there with a good shot by Malhotra. Gillespie to Malhotra. Well caught, well judged. And a vital wicket. Malhotra goes. His captain. Won't be at all pleased about that because Malhotra was playing well. He had Kapil Dev in with him. They were looking to a big partnership between now and 50 overs. That's trouble for India, the six wicket down. That was well judged by Martin Snedden out of deep mid on. Probably a little bit difficult for him to initially pick up to. He's looking into the dark trees, but he got around, judged it nicely, took it right underneath the chin, and Malhotra 
picking up his highest score in this series, but unfortunately for India, getting out at exactly the wrong time, he's out for 39. And India in his 36th over, 6 for 127. Chetan Sharma is the new batsman. Six wickets down now for India. Their skipper taking strike, Gillespie bowling. Very close, yes, must be. Now, why on earth would he play a stroke like that at that stage of the innings? That looked to me as though it was going to hit middle stump. Didn't get up at all. Perhaps he was beaten by the bounce, thinking he was going to bounce uh, well above bale height. Oh, absolutely plumb. No wonder the New Zealanders look pleased and Kapil Dev disconsolate. Some bad batting in those last couple of deliveries, firstly from Mel Hotra and then from Kapil Dev. And Gillespie, he's now on a hat trick with India 7 for 127. Here's Gillespie again. And a hat trick avoided. And a single to bid. And Russia blood then by Mel Hotra and Kapil Dev. And New Zealand in complete control of this match now. Now, who wants that one? Well, there are all sorts of fellas who didn't want it. The one who eventually had to go at it has put it down. And it's Jeff Crow. This was a matter of raffling that catch, and one that certainly should have been taken. Sharma, who likes to play his shots, he had virtually capitulated. Then he was nearly walking off, and Jeff Crow at the end really taking his eyes off it. it came down very quickly perhaps whirling around in the breeze but what a let off 38 overs gone and they've got Hadley away through the infield small ground short boundary on that side once it gets through there's very little chance of cutting it off Peter Williams of New Zealand Television is with us. Thank you, Richie. Chitin Sharma, such a dashing lower order batsman. Just squirting that away to the point boundary for four. There she goes. That's a beauty. The wrong hop over mid wicket for six. The little man, Chitin Sharma, got a lot of courage and fire, and it was beautifully struck. Yes, he's, uh, he's good news, isn't he? Yes, they want to be a little careful in those trees up there. That was a good shot. He hit that right in the meat of the bat. A little bit harder it would have been amongst those youngsters sitting up there. It was a good shot by uh, Chet and Sharma. He never gives up, both with the bat and the ball. And he's got 16 now of 17 balls, so he's doing well. That's beautifully driven. Glorious cover drive, finding the gaps, intelligent batting by Shet and Sharma. Nicely placed and a big square leg, four runs. 14 runs off the over, seven for 168. Well timed, Roger Vinnie. My word, that was a good shot. One bounce over the fence. Westby coming in from off to leg and Vinnie picking it up beautifully. Yes, that was a lovely shot, and uh, the ball tends to stay down a little bit at that end, and Benny, in fact, taking advantage of it. Have a look at this. Just rolls the wrists on it, flicks it away into the gap, down towards the mid-wicket boundary. Just one bounce into the crowd down there. That is nice timing, too, so this field now really beginning to spread out as Benny begins to uh, cut loose as well. Oh, beautifully driven. That's four more straight down the ground. Sneddon won't get that. And this record crowd seeing a wonderful rear guard action. That's the 50 partnership between these two in eight overs. So a really useful partnership. And have a look at that for a magnificent straight drive. There's a man down at uh, a wide mid-on position. Try to get there. It's uh, Martin Sneddon, but no chance. Beautiful timing. Close, got him, yes, Roger Binney playing back and we're seeing some LBWs today. Plum in front, played back and across and the eighth wicket falls to the great Hadley. Yes, uh, this was bang on target. 
Benny right across in front of those stumps there, and uh, I think he had the feeling as he started running down the pitch there that uh, it was all over. Hit him just above the roll, but uh, the umpire down that end, but judging that he was plump. So Roger Benny out for a very useful 24 in 25 balls. They're eight for 180. You and Chatfield normally very tight. He's hit straight through that. That was a glorious off-drive. Kilcarney comes up and says, well done, and rightly so. Yes, I don't know exactly what how to do for well done is, but uh, he certainly put it out there a few times. That was a magnificent shot. But he's done the job. He's whipped it down square. Missfield, and it's four. The wheel's just falling off slightly for New Zealand, so that's Kilcarney's reply. I can't believe that uh, he missed that without some deflection. Did that hit a bird, perhaps? It must have hit something, because it looked as if he had it covered down there for a second, and all of a sudden it went the other direction. Let's see if we can pick up... Uh... Yes, I think it must have hit something there. It may well have been one of the seagulls. 8 for 199, India. That's a top edge, and he's gone, caught, backward point. Kukani out, and I think Sharma may have crossed halfway. Or has he been sent back? We'll watch that later. Yes, I doubt whether he made it. Uh, it went straight to the fieldsman. I know he was trying, though. Now, that was a useful little partnership. This one uh, finds the outside edge. He was trying to hit it down the ground, straight to the fieldsman there. It's Gillespie fielding at uh, short third man, and that's the end of Kukani. He made nine, a quick fire nine, nine for 199. They're all spreading out now, so this is the last ball of the Indian. Alex that runs his scores. And he summed it up pretty well. That's intelligent batting. That's the over. So it's nine for 202 after 48 overs. Well, that's a big effort from India there, a real bonus for them. I was reckoning that uh, they'd be lucky to make more than 160, certainly when Kapil Dev got out. And finally, they finished up with 9 for 202. That was only from 48 over, so that's all that uh, New Zealand will get. New Zealand trying desperately hard to take that last wicket in the final over, which would have meant they'd have got a full 50. A fairly consistent-looking scorecard. Malotra 39 and Chetan Sharma a dashing 38 in 37 balls towards the end. And that was the partnership that gave India the chance of recovery. Chetan Sharma and Binny, 53 from just nine overs, only two runs short of the best partnership, Malotra and Shastri, 55 in 15. The bowling figures, well, what a marvellous bowler Richard Hadley is. 10 overs, five maidens, two for 17 in a total of nine for 202. Chatfield, one wicket, Gillespie, three, and at one stage on a hat-trick, two for 46 to Sneddon, and one for 35 to Martin Crow. So New Zealand required 203 to win in 48 overs. They have to get them at 4.22 per over. I don't think that'll be very easy because there is certainly some variable bounce in this pitch, but either way, this is a sudden death contest this afternoon. Bruce Edgar, 57 innings, 1,624 runs. Quite a shout there from Keppel Dev, and a long look from umpire Randall. In India, they'll be up for anything today that's close, particularly LBW, but just a little high. Second slips fieldsman was also up supporting Kapil Dev. Kapil Dev now, he's now desperate to try and get this early breakthrough. He's brought in another gully, too. So three slips in the gully, an attacking field. Setting by the Indian captain. Crow gets that one past Shiva Ramakrishnan in the gully. Just two runs off that over. It's none for six. Mid on, and he's gone. Well taken by Paul Carney. That ball was hit firmly by Jeff Crow. Came right off the middle of the bat, but he didn't get quite enough loft on the shot. And that second opening position causing New Zealand lots of problems. It was Bracewell during the week. Today it's Jeff Crow holding out to Kulkarni that mid-on. As Ian Chappell mentioned, it was firmly hit. But uh, good breakthrough by India. That's the type of breakthrough they needed. Jeff Crow out. 
Kulkarni bowled Benny for three and New Zealand one for seven. Well played, that one's cut away very firmly, races away to the boundary, no chance in the world of getting to that one on this outfield. Ashok Mulhotka down there at third man, but what a nice shot this is. What a difference between just dabbing the ball down, opening the face and the, uh, the basically technically correct back cut over the ball, rolled the wrist, hit it into the ground with a certain amount of power, had complete control of that shot and that brings up a boundary for Edgar. That one played away down towards square leg. It's uh, done nothing to damage the uh, timing here of the New Zealanders, and I think that one signaled four down there by the fieldsman. So it's one for 21. Uh, we have the committee room of Simon Harvey and Boston's dad. That's beautifully played through mid wicket by Martin Crow. It might not get down to the boundary. Yes, it will. Whew. Went thundering in there and uh, to ensure that uh, Kilcarney didn't uh, injure himself there. He certainly hit that board very hard. It's a beautiful striker, wonderfully balanced. And Kilcarney sets off in chase. Right for the life of me, can't see. Uh, my fieldsman dive like this as a dirt. Definitely a, a big chance of injury. The foot goes underneath and the head hits the McDonald sign there. And he could have done himself quite a bit of damage there. He goes under and then clunk. Holds his eyes. Oh, what a catch! That's an unbelievable catch by Roger Vinny. He smashed that back at him. Binney has only had time to put it slightly move his hand. That could be a match-winning catch. Well, talking about Shell Ultra Classic catches, have a look at this one. And it certainly would have made the finals too. That's the shot of a man in form in rare touch. And Roger Binney just centimetres, millimetres off the ground. Balance lunging forward. A great reflex catch, just gets the fingers underneath it, throws it in the air, and, well, pro, a disappointed man. And 10 runs on the board, New Zealand now in trouble, 2 for 27. Tony Crafter was quite happy, convinced that was a fair catch. Oh, well, big appeal there for LBW. Oh, that's the end of a very successful over. Two for 27. So five runs per over from here on in. With eight wickets in hand. I have to be quick here. Oh, he was gone for all money. John Reed slow. Chetan Sharma's quick, unfortunately for India. He missed, he steadied, he did everything right, Chetan Sharma. He steadied, took aim, and missed the three of them. And then Kilkani, Moray up, not getting the bails off. More rain coming down. And the last ball of the 15th over is coming up. That's the run out again. Moray did well and only just missed. Here's the last ball of the 15th. No run there, rain coming down, and we have a match now that each side has faced 15 overs. It's two for 30, New Zealand. So whenever there's rain about, the side batting second has the advantage because um, of a re reduction in the number of overs, but they also have to play sensibly enough to keep their run rate up to the required point. If we strike found the gap, beats three men in a cover position, and that's four. That's what John Reed required to lift his confidence and his team's confidence at this stage. Placement was there, that was what was needed. It's beautifully played. That's a glorious shot from Bruce Edgar. 
Sharma just drifting onto leg stump. The breeze coming across the ground. And Edgar punched that beautifully through mid wicket. Once the ball's through the infield on this small ground, it's uh, almost certain to go to, uh, to go to the boundary. It gets 21 from 48 balls. But placement is the key to it here. You don't have to hit the ball hard. You have to place it, and it'll run away from the fielder. And he's gone, caught behind. Bruce Edgar, done by Shastri, the one that goes straight on. May have been assisted a little by the breeze, pushing it away. And the third wicket goes down. India, the world champions, have struck again. Four points to Kapil Dev, a courageous move to bring on his spinner. At this stage, the left arm tweaker didn't let him down. The ball just coming straight on. The slightest of touches. Moray takes the catch. Crafter puts up the finger. And Edgar departs. Three for 48. The rain has stopped, so that's a good sign for the players. And the umpires indeed have had uh, a chat uh, out there and they've decided now on the uh, rearrangement of the match this is going to now be a 45 over game so the target reduces to 190 so uh, New Zealand now need 190 to win and uh, that means they've got to score at 6.71 per over so Ravi Shastri again left arm round the wicket yep. but driven away nicely by Jeremy Coney, they'll settle for two here. Malhotra, the fieldsman, five runs from the over, three, four, ninety. That one's over the top. Nicely hit, actually, right off the meat of the bat and uh, eventually into the side screen. So, four runs signaled by umpire Crafter. That was a beautiful shot by John Reed. Didn't try and force it, just timed it. Yes, it was uh, It was a controlled hit. It wasn't a slog, it wasn't a full-blooded drive. Just felt the ball on the bat. A little bit of bottom hand to lift it up over the bowler, past the umpire, and had enough pace on it to roll under the side screen. That's not going to be of any use to New Zealand at all. It kept a bit low. John Reid was done by bowler there and by the pitch and New Zealand are in strife that one did keep a little low and we've seen a few do that today just darting back off the seam going between the gap between bat and pad Reed looking to angling it away Kulkani picking up the wickets so New Zealand 4 for 102 still needing 88 runs in this 33rd over That's the charge that has to be made by New Zealand. Beautiful fielded out there by Roger Binney. They must make the effort now. Shastri's off. Coney and Hadley are the two experienced batsmen. Jeremy Coney giving Kulkani the charge. And as Richie Benno mentioned, decision obviously been made to take a few risks. And a few risks. Catch nicely judged. Chetan Sharma, the first ball, and the Indian team just run to the fielder out there to congratulate him. Mohammad Ashruddin has taken the catch, and the dangerous man Hadley has gone. Jeremy Coney is left out there to try and hold together the innings. This is a sudden death shootout between New Zealand and India. Hadley made the decision to go, and he hit with the wind, but unfortunately picked. Mohammed Azruddin straight out. The youngster, a great pair of hands, went straight to him. And the danger man, as far as India is concerned, is on his way back to the pavilion. Richard Hadley out for five. And New Zealand still needing 77, a five for 113. And he's the man who has to do it. He's got the experience, he's the skipper. He's been off the field for a long time today. Has to take control. Shastri, down it goes. What a good, well, almost a good attempt. Misjudged, perhaps a little in the end. 
<laughs> Probably had to go up in the air for it instead of reaching. Even so, he wasn't at full strength. Kearney survives. Just had the feeling, Richie, he didn't quite pick that one up. It was the last minute's lunge by Shastri. Certainly the tallest man in the Indian side. Yep. Kearney looking for two. Doesn't make the extra couple of yards or meters to get that one, and he really should have got hands on that uh, ball. Yes, when the pressure is really on, you would have thought that desperation would have been the name of the game. It stayed up in the air for quite some time. It was a lofted shot, and Binny played it safe. Allowed the ball to bounce, still gave away two runs, and that's not good enough from Roger Binny, who took a magnificent return catch off his own bowling. Disappointment for Kapil Dev, who needs a wicket badly. Lofted straight to Shastri. This time he doesn't make a mistake. And that was exactly what Kapil Dev wanted. So Kapil Dev getting the better of his New Zealand counterpart. Yes, what a magnificent cricketer. Just when the captain needs to do something, captain to captain, he drove it straight to the vice captain, Ravi Shastri, who took the straightforward catch. And that's just what the doctor ordered for India. Six for 135. 38 balls and 55 runs required by New Zealand. Coney out for 37. As always, Kepal Dev, a swinging Yorker. And once again, we have that situation where the bowler's on a hat trick. Kepal Dev. One of the world's great all-rounders under enormous pressure as captain comes on, bowls the Yorker, hits the boot onto the stumps, McSweeney out first ball, and Kapildeg strikes the end of the over. McSweeney departs for naught, 38 balls. That'll be 37 balls to come, 55 runs required, 7 for 135. So we've got two left-handers at the crease now. Bruce Blair is the one on strike to Chetan Sharma. That's nicely hit and well placed. So Blair is really the last hope now for New Zealand. Beautifully hit and uh, straight past Shastri. I oh, he's a powerful player, Bruce Blair. Yes, well, he's keeping it on the ground when he can, and sometimes when he can't, he hits through the gap. Beat Ravi Shastri, who was at a stra straightish mid-off. Races away for four. They're really on the move now, as they should be. To so with Kapil Dev on strike. The mid-off just inside the circle. And there's a mid-wicket, some 20 metres from the bat. This time he decides to go in the air. Binny, and he's got it. Binny made ground much better on that occasion. Uh, Keppel Dev delighted as he picks up his third wicket in two overs. What a match, what a performance by Keppel Dev and Roger Binney this time, making no mistake. Martin Snedden whipped that away, didn't quite get to it, but caught it knee high, two hands, and Keppel Dev raised his fist to the heavens. Snedden out for one, eight for one for seven. Driven straight back to the bowler and straight through his hands. Chet and Sharma, who took a brilliant uh, court and bowled up in Brisbane, most disappointed at missing that one. Yes, it wasn't all that well struck, but high on the blade. He had it covered, but he sort of snatched at it at the last minute, tried to take a mark, but didn't concede a run, which is very important. The ball fell to ground and the mid-off was in quickly. Well, I'd say that Stuart Gillespie cannot bat. He can't put bat to ball, he just needs to push a single. He's flashing away outside off stump and leaving Bruce Blair standing at the non-striker's end. Not good enough. 40 runs for victory. He hit that one nicely and found the gap. Armath um, won't cut that off. So Gillespie's starting to find a bit of form with the bat. Yes, just when he looks the complete batting bunny, he gets one in the middle, takes the pressure off Blair. A couple of sixes are needed now. And one or two more boundaries and anything can happen.
Gillespie, Chet and Sharma, and he can't get to it. So there are 10 balls remaining, and they want 28. Yes, well, Gillespie placed that beautifully. It was a fraction short of a good length. It wasn't full enough. And Chet and Sharma, they want about seven fours out of 10 deliveries remaining. Tough task. He hasn't timed it at all. Straight down Shakant's throat. And that one hitting right on the bottom of the bat. And I think you can safely say that it's going to be an India v Australia final series. Yes, Bruce Blair going over long on, right in the end of the queue. And Shrikant took a dolly of a catch at mid-wicket. Ninth wicket is down. Roger Binney strikes again. Nine for 163. Keppel Dev is going to try his hand as a spinner. He can do everything else in this game of cricket. I think he might as well uh, try his hand as a spinner. Let's see if it's a leg break or an off break. Looks like it might be an off break, I think. So India comfortably in the end getting through to the final series. And we'll have now Australia v India in that best of three series. And the first match will be at the SCG on Wednesday, a day-night game. A lot of tension here at the Tasmanian cricket ground, the Manchester ground, and the winners of the India will go into the finals with Australia. Uh, here now are the two captains, Jeremy Coney and Kapil Dev with Tony Gregg. And Tony Gregg has that $5,000 that they play for every time they play these uh, initial rounds. And congratulations, Keppel. Thanks a lot, $5,000 Tony. allocated by the board. Thank I'm you. out of the Benson Hedges kitty. Tremendous win and through to the finals. You and your team must be very happy. Well, uh, I think uh, we played uh, good cricket end of the day's play. Uh, we didn't uh, bat very well in the beginning. And thanks to Chetan and Roger, they played extremely well. And uh, in the end, I think uh, the bowler put 100% and they bowled good line. Uh, it was a uh, touch and go. And the weather was such, a lot of uh, clouds was hanging around. but. Uh, I think in the manage, we managed in the end. Well, you looked a bit worried when you lost the toss. You obviously wanted to win that one. Well, uh, we have a lot of strength in batting because our bowlers are not as mature as batsmen, so I always take to bat second. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was a bit worried, but uh, you can't help it, can you? No, you can't. Yeah. Well, anyhow, you've got through to the finals now, and uh, you've won the World Cup, you've won the World Championship of Cricket. Can you take away the Benson Hedges World Series Cup? I set, hope so. 86? I hope so, how we started, no? I think last three, four games we played extremely well. The only thing, still, I think, uh, in the beginning of the match, uh, batting is a bit uh, slow down. That's the only part. Uh, if we sort it out, that definitely will win this cup. Well, congratulations. Thank you very much. Performance today. Well done. Right, we've also got $1,500 for, for you, Jeremy Coney. Thank you, Tony. Bad luck. Um, it, was, it was a disappointing match for New Zealand. Yeah, I think uh, I think the, the team tried very hard. Um, we perhaps dropped a you know a fairly vital catch as it happened. Not that it was an easy one at all, but uh, it it may have made the difference in the end. You never know. Right. But uh, they tried hard, and uh, good luck to India. Well played. Straight back to New Zealand. Yes, certainly. Well, well thanks very much for all the entertainment you chaps have provided this year, and uh, look forward to seeing you again. Thank you very much. Thank you. And the man of the match, this uh, Benson Hedges Gold Goblet as well as $500, none other than that tremendous little enthusiast, Chetan Ch Sharma. Congratulations. There we are. Thanks. Don't forget that. Thank you. you obviously enjoyed that immensely. Oh, yeah, I love to play like this, you know. Right from the word go, you've uh, enjoyed coming out in those sort of tense situations and hitting it all around the ground? That's my game, Tony. I Is love it? to play like that. Well, look, you're giving a lot of people a lot of pleasure. Congratulations and good luck in the finals. Thank you very much. Thanks. Right. Well, there we are. Lots of smiling faces down here. Back to you, Richie, in the central commentary position. Thanks, Tony. Well, it was a very, very good match, and India just a little too good. Let's have a look at the cards now and trace the pattern of the game all the way through. First of all, Jeremy Coney won the toss and put India in. Nine for 202 they made. The top scorer, Ashok Malotra, 39, and Chetan Sharma, 38. And that partnership between Chetan Sharma and Roger Binney put on 53 in 34 minutes and took only nine overs. The bowling figures for New Zealand, Hadley was superb. 10 overs, 5 maidens, 2 for 17. Chatfield, 9 overs, 1 for 43. And Gillespie, 9 overs, 3 for 53. The reason they only bowled 9 was uh, only 48 overs were got through in all by New Zealand. Snedden, 2 for 46. And Crow, 1 for 35. So 
That wasn't all that bad. It meant New Zealand required 203 from 48 overs and the asking rate was 4.22 on a small ground. They finished up with 9 for 168 and uh, they just didn't get going. I heard Ian Chappell say that they didn't get one big score and that's quite right. They, the top score there was 37. They needed someone to make a half century or 60. They couldn't go on with it. Reed made 37 and so did Coney and Coney wasn't well so it was the most meritorious performance. He was off the field for much of the time with migraine. 26 to Bruce Edgar and towards the end Bruce Blair ran out of partners. He made 19 from 24 balls and Gillespie remained 15 not out from 21 and the bowling figures for India Kapil Dev once again a superb performance 9 overs 1 maiden 3 for 26 Roger Binney exactly the same figures Chetan Sharma the player of the match 1 for 35 and Ravi Shastri a wicket bowled superbly again and so too Kulkarni 9 overs 1 for 40 the Benson Hedges World Series Cup table at the end of the 15 preliminary rounds Australia 13 points India 10 and New Zealand seven. So coming up, the first of the finals, Australia against India. That's Wednesday, the 5th of February at the Sydney Cricket Ground. Live coverage starts at 2.20 p.m. I can tell you that all seats are sold for that match already. There are tickets in the outer remaining. If you want to get along to see that, then you should be very quick with your purchase. We look forward to having you with us then on Nines Wide World of Sports.